Hey guys, thanks so much for joining today. Today we are going to do an interview with a good friend of mine, Caroline Hartley. Caroline is a photographer, but before I get carried away and tell you too much about um, her life and the things she does, let's get on to it. Let's ask Caroline. Caroline, thank you so much for joining. So I'm really, really grateful. Um, so for those of you who don't know you, um, why don't you just like intro who you are, what you do, kind of how you got into, you know. Okay, so I'm Caroline and I've got two horses of my own. Mm. Um, I have an old horse, he's 29, starting to feel his health now. And I've got a youngster, um, he's eight, and he's now starting to get ready and train up for shows, which is all very new for him. Um, not for me, but for him. <laughs> it's my experience. Um, so yeah, and then um, I moved to Joburg when I was at, in high school. Mm -hmm. and wasn't happy about moving to Joburg, and we lived in a very horsey area. And my dad said to me, well, why don't you start horse riding? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what else is there to do in this town? And I started horse riding, and I think my dad thought, oh, it's going to be a phase. Mm -hmm. Well, the phase has lasted over 30 years. Yes! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, two horses out of well, I've had, I don't know how many horses, but two horses, mm -hmm. 30 odd years, I've had horses. And then I got into photography, just thought, what else am I going to do? Okay. Decided to try photography and see what happens, and really the bug bit, big time. And then I wanted to study photography and get a diploma behind my name, or some form of education behind yeah. my name. And then towards the end of the year course, it was a very intense course. Mm -hmm. A year course, we did everything from studio photography to food photography to journalism. We covered everything, uh, the business side of photography, okay. uh, everything. And um, towards the end of the course, my dad said to me, so what are you going to do? So I said, well, I definitely want to do something with, um, with photography, mm -hmm. but I don't really know what yet. So he said, well, your horse is just retired from shows. Uh, why did you go to shows and photograph horses? You love photography, you love horses, combine the two. And that's what I did, and that's where it just snowballed. And um, just went to shows and building up my contract, uh, my um, portfolio. Yeah. Until eventually, a year later, after building up my portfolio and carrying on building up my portfolio, <laughs> um, one of the guys came to me from the shows and said, Oh, where can we find our photographs? And I was like, Oh, okay. So I tried to step out of myself and be all big and proper and big business like. And I said, I'll go to Facebook and this is where you can find it. Now it's old hat. And then I started venturing out to private shoots with riders and their horses, um, whether it's one horse or lots of horses. Um, and then I took it a step further and started doing dogs, cats, other pets, mm -hmm. chickens even. <laughs> um, and then I branched out from that to start doing um, couples and families, and so it's just branched out into going from there. So yeah, um, yeah. Um, when you go to shows, because I think you know uh, that's where most people would see a photographer. Yeah. No. Um, when you go to shows, like what's what's the best part of the show? What's the absolute worst part of the show? I think the worst part of the show is you've been at the show the whole day Saturday, the whole day Sunday, and you've photographed your last rider on the Sunday, and you're on your way home, and the phone goes beep beep, and it's one of the riders saying, "When where's my photographs?" And I haven't even got home yet. Um, and you come home with three thousand photographs, and you go sit there and you go edit these photographs. And especially, I always find it's the people who was like the last riders on the Sunday. Where's my photographs? And I'm like, well, you're going to have to wait. Um, but the highlight is just meeting awesome people and awesome ponies. I mean, every horse that comes into the arena is like, I want that horse, I want that horse. Um, until eventually I get to know the horses before I know the riders. Um, and it's just building up a, a, a relationship with the riders and how they progress, progress. And I've been doing it for 11 years now and seeing kids junior school kids on little ponies, and now they have finished school and they're riding big horses, and it's like, where did the time go? And um, so yes, it's just meeting weird and wonderful people, <laughs> get all types, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and then just bracing it up from there, and people coming up to me and saying, do you do private tunes, and what about this, and what about that? And oh, I've had it quite a few times, I think it's three times, where people have come to me and said, I want to put my horse down, and I'd like to have a shoot, to my horse, and that's quite hard. Yeah. Um, to try and sort of step out of the emotional mm -hmm. side of things and just act like the horse is still, especially when the horse is young. 
Um, and then it's a competition horse, mm. and they're jumping one meter forty. And I was contacted to say, I need to do a photo shoot because I they need to put the horse down. And I'm thinking, please don't be. And they said, yeah, so he's in the prime of his career. Mm. And I had to do a shoot and they had to put the horse down the next day. And, you know, when you edit those photographs, it kind of sort of brings a heart lump to your heart because it's like, okay, but well, he's no longer with us. Um, so yeah, the, the shows is, is meeting, it's not easy, you get very difficult people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a highlight. And then also I think one of the biggest highlights was going to shows is when people ask me for to do a private shoot. Mm -hmm. I think the private shoots are a bit more rewarding because you know you're going to get a certain amount mm -hmm. to go to a show. Mm -hmm. You can come home with 3,000 photographs and you don't know if you're going to sell one or five or 500. So um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've also kind of noticed that it shows I think I was always under the impression when I was just a rider that you know the photographers are really competitive. Mm -hmm. But from what I've seen knowing you a bit more and getting to know Ingrid is that you guys, you know, you can't all be everywhere. Yeah. Like you can't be in five arenas at yeah. the same time. Yeah. And and I kind of get the feeling specifically in Cape Town that you guys are much more of a family and much, you know, you obviously get the exceptions, but that you guys yeah. kind of work together, networking more yeah. than, than just be competitive. No, we definitely do. And, you know, Ingrid will say to me, oh, can't you go and photograph at Camelot because I can't make it this weekend. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then I'll stand in for her or she'll stand in for me, especially if I'm, because I'm a photographer and a rider, yeah. very young horse now coming up to do shows. I kind of do both. Um, it's a bit difficult to ride and take photographs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and even if I'm riding at a show and then photograph in the afternoon, I still don't, I must either ride or I must yeah. photograph. I can't do both. Um, and then I'll say to Ingrid, I'm riding, please can you come and photograph for me? And then we just help each other out that way. Yeah, um, really also, if there's a show and there's three or four arenas going on, I will ask the officials or the organizers, please, if you've got four arenas, please find four photographers. Mm -hmm. So that if I'm photographing, say, in a medium dressage arena, and they say, oh, I was riding at 10 o'clock, I can say, actually go and speak to so-and-so because they were in the arena doing that yeah. night class. Rather than you trying to cover four arenas and 25 million people, yeah. um, so yeah, we do, we all do stand together. There is also a little bit of politics in the, in the photography side, it's really everything. Um, most of us get on, get on well and we support each other, but there are a few that, I suppose it's everywhere, you know. Mm -hmm. um, some people will like that person's photograph and some people will like my photographs, it's just what people like. Um, but yes, we usually do cover up for each other and say, I can't be there, I'm driving, I'm away, you standing. But we, ta we do try and help each other where we can. Mm. So, yeah. Awesome. Mm. Um, and also, I think I was speaking to you, Rinda, about this, where you remember was saying, you know, each photographer has quite a distinct style yeah. and like, quite a distinct way of doing things. Mm. Um, you know, and I suppose each person is also different, yeah. you know, and each person likes a different type of photography. I definitely, and I think when you, when you get out there, you can say, oh, that's Jessica's photograph, mm. or oh, that's Caroline's photograph, mm. or I don't like Jessica's style, I like Caroline's style, so I'll ask Jessica to photograph while I'll ask Caroline to photograph for me. Um, so they're all different, it depends what you, what type of style you like. Mm -hmm. Um, myself, I like to make my photographs pretty much as natural as possible, yeah. um, and I'm quite sort of keen on the not oversaturating, but making it quite sort of pop out at you. Um, where others are a bit more, sort of, let's call it gentle, it's a bit mm -hmm. more overexposed, maybe not overexposed. Um, and people have different styles of how they're going to photograph the horses, whether they're going to just do sort of headshots or body shots mm -hmm. or. Um, if they're going to sit down and photograph or they're going to stand up and photograph. Mm. So it just depends what everybody feels different with. Um, it's also kind of strange because now that I've got a horse that's young and competing, I want photographs taken with me and mine. Yeah. And it's very difficult with that because then I've got a photographer and I'm like, yeah, but you know, you stand like that and use the settings <laughs> and you've got to actually say to yourself, you know what, you're not a photographer now. Yeah. You, you know, you, you're now the model and let the photographer do what they're going to do. Mm. And I had a photo shoot with a photographer, and she said, you know, it's actually lovely photographing a photographer because the photographer knows how to pose. Yeah. There's no, okay, now put your hand here and stand like this and look this way. And mm. um, so, yeah, there's lots of, of techniques to it and, um, and different styles. Yeah. And, I mean, there's certain photographers I'll use to photograph me and others that I want. And it happens with everybody. So, yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned it earlier that you kind of, you know, when you're at a show, most of our shows are Saturday and Sunday, yeah. and then you go home on Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. 
So you spend, let's say, eight hours a day at a show? Easy, yeah. So that's 16 hours of a weekend. Um, how much time would you then be spending at home editing those photos? Would you edit everything or would you rough edit things and then, you know, edit, make it more um, refined when someone buys it? What, what's your approach? Everybody has a different workflow. Mm -hmm. My workflow is I go home, <coughs> download the photographs and then I go through them all. Mm -hmm. And I delete and I keep, but I delete and I keep. Mm -hmm. If the photograph is slightly out of focus, I will obviously trash it. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll go through the photographs a second time, mm -hmm. um, especially on a private shoot like a um, like a metric dance. Mm -hmm. Then there's a lot of the same. Yes. Um, and then I'll have to go through it again. I think, oh, well, I've got three of the same. Which one am I going to throw away? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I will do what we call cull and maybe cull again. And then I'll edit all those ones that I have decided that I'm going to be edited. With the show, it's difficult because you've got a good sort of, I don't know, 50 to 100 riders a day. Mm -hmm. So you've got a lot more photographs because it's, it depends if it's jumping or dressage, there's a lot of the same rider. Yeah. And looking for the outline, the right outline of what the horse is, or how he's jumping, if he tucks his feet neatly or he hangs his feet. And how you're going to. I also look at the photographs and say, if that was my, my horse and I, would I buy that photograph? Um, and then sometimes I put photographs in and I get people saying, oh, that's a stunning photograph. I'm like, yeah, but it's kind of out of focus, but okay. And then there's a beautiful photograph that's sharp and mm. nothing happens. Mm. So I tend to put a little bit in of everything um, because what I like might not necessarily do what you like. Um, I might like in a dress or two, I might like the way the horse is cantering, but maybe he can look better. Mm. But that's what I like, and that's not what the rider likes. So it's about everything that I put in. Um, so yes, then I edit them all, and then I put them on, on Facebook, or now I've gone over to Shoot Proof, mm -hmm. and then the riders go through those, and they just let me know which photographs they like. And I, I fish them out, and then I email them to them, or put them on canvas, or print them, yeah. whichever they, whatever they prefer to have it as. Um, and that's my workflow. Yeah. Um, it can take a long time. It depends on what I'm doing in my own life as well. But um, to edit a show of a maybe a two-day show of maybe 3,000 photographs, it can take me easy up to two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then it's difficult because then you get the writers. You get some pushy writers saying, oh, but you know, I need my photograph because I was the Victor Lodorum and I need it for the newspaper. And then you've got to go and sit through this, yeah. you know. So, and also if you get um, asked to be an official photographer, mm -hmm. then the show organisers usually want the prize giving photographs for their, for their prize winners of that show that they can, so then you've got to go ahead and do them first. Mm -hmm. I like to work from the beginning to the end. So I like to do the first rider on the Saturday and do the last rider on the Sunday, but sometimes it doesn't work that way. And, um, it's a bit irritating when they don't want to pay you for your extra effort, but it's the job. And so, no. And you mentioned just now that you know you either give to them digitally or on canvas and so forth. Have you found in the last eleven years that the medium that people have asked photos for has changed? Yes, it's definitely most digital. Okay. Um, I think it's nice for them to have a digital image. Um, it's a big image, high res image. So you can print it big, um, and luckily these days there are um, techniques or programs out there that you can email big files. Mm -hmm. And then it's nice for, for the client to decide whether he wants it on canvas <coughs> or he wants it on an A5 or how he wants mm -hmm. to print it. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a lot of different packages for my private shoots. Mm -hmm. And they look at that and they think, oh no, I just want a CD because I haven't got much money, so I'll send the CD with the photographs. And then again, they can choose if they want at a later stage to print it, or they might want the extensive shoot, which comes with an A2 canvas, mm. and then they say, I want that one on canvas. So it's, and then I do it for them yeah, right there and then. But it's completely up to what the client has, and that's why I have, I think it's four different packages for the equine packages. Mm -hmm. And then it depends on your budget and what you can afford. So there's a very cheap and there's a very expensive, and I think there's two in the middle. So it depends on what they want to, where their budget is and what they can afford. So you mentioned earlier that you do shoots, private shoots with horse and rider. When you do these shoots, um, do you find that you end up doing more just rider, just horse? Do you find that you end up doing more ridden photos, or you know, kind of how do you put these? I packages together for these people, kind of how do you decide on which shots? Yeah, when they ask me to, to do a photo shoot for them, let's assume it's a horse and rider shoot, I will say to them, what is it that you want? 
do you want to ride your horse? Do you want to ride your horse, horse bareback? Where do you want to do the shoot? Do you want to go to the beach? Do you want to be in the field? Uh, no, I've got a gorgeous field down the road on my granny's farm and I can... So I ask them what they want and where they want to do it. And then I do a bit of everything anyway as well. So I do a bit of... I need a horse, I do a bit of... I need a rider. And then I try... Me personally, I try not to compose too much okay. or direct too much. Mm -hmm. I rather get that sort of unposed moments mm. where it's a special moment between her and her horse. Mm. Um, and then if she's got her hand in the way by his eye, and I'll say just move your hand a little bit down. Um, but otherwise, I tend to just keep quiet and I let them just do their thing. Um, I also ask the client, are they going to be jumping? Are they going to be just walking? What are they going to do? And then I really try and tell them not to put over each boots on their horses or show those bell yeah, boots yeah, yeah. that go on, on the, over the hoof because those are really not a pretty piece of art. <laughs> <laughs> um, if they want to do jumping, they are quite happy to have tenon boots on. Mm -hmm. um, but I do try and tell them just for the shoot if they can just take those okay. yeah. over each boots off, which is, it doesn't look nice. I've done a shoot where everything was great, it was an awesome shoot, the light was stunning, all the rest got home and I edited and I saw there those over each boots. Yeah. And it just, <laughs> So now I make sure that I'm saying, okay, if you can, can you take the overage boots off? Um, it, it makes sense. It's something I wouldn't have thought about, but if you think about the shape of the front leg, I mean, those overage boots, especially if you've got a finer arable yeah. thoroughbred with like pretty legs, yeah. you know, those overage boots completely yeah. Yeah. knock away that effect and there's nothing you can do no, about it. It's, it's, it's one of those things that you, you can't really edit, up, edit up. Mm -hmm. Um If I'm taking a photograph and I get home and I see there's a pole coming out of the horse's ear, I can try and edit that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to try and edit an overreach boot out <laughs> is not so easy. Yeah. Or if the horse has got a horrible scar on his side, mm -hmm. it's not part of his everyday life. Mm -hmm. And if the light is shining wrong, I can actually take it out. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I've done horses that have, have had blemishes, they've run into a tree and they've cut themselves, mm -hmm. and then I can take it out. Um, I've also found that I have edited photographs where the one girl, she had a bruise on her arm, mm -hmm. and out of every photograph, I took that bruise out, and a, another person was photographing with me, and they left the bruise in, and I'm yeah. like, she doesn't have that bruise, it's just yeah, there for a short time, take yeah. it out. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They are paying for the photographs, so um, at the show, when I edit the show pictures, I'm actually not as finicky, mm -hmm. because I'm not going to edit a photograph of the pole coming out of a horse's ear, and a bruise on the, on the mm -hmm. whatever, just now they don't buy the photograph. If they want that photograph and then they say, please take the pole on the horses here, yeah, then I will just go a little bit further. But with the private shoot, they're buying those photographs and mm. maybe they want to put it on canvas or something. And then I'll take, spend a bit more time. Mm. Until, and also it's a, it's a lot less photographs that you have to edit because you've said to them, you're getting between 100, 150 and 200 photographs. Mm -hmm. So I'll go that extra time just to take blemishes out or whatever it is. But on the show, I'm not as... As finicky. And it's, it's a really, really nice photo photograph and the horse is really in a nice position and, and the boot is coming off or something, then I'll try and do something yeah, to it. Yeah. But otherwise, for the most part, unless they want the photographs, then I'll send to them and then I'll take the pole coming out of his ear or <laughs> whatever it is, but yeah. Um, yeah, I can imagine. Mm. I mean, you can't control the environment no. at all times. No. No. We try. Yeah, no. Like and I mean, I've had people saying, oh, please do a photo shoot of me and I'm like, okay, no, that's fine. <clears throat> Come through and I'm thinking, <gasps> There's no way to photograph. It's like just oh. wire, uh, telephone wires, and you just think, what can I do with this? Mm. And you edit these, you take these photographs, and you just think, oh, the horses or whatever, the animal, the horse, whatever, mm. is blending in with this background. It's just telephone wires. Oh. And, and that's, so I also usually ask them, we need some nice backgrounds. Mm. If you've got a black mm. horse, I mean, completely black, <laughs> it's got no markings. That's also very difficult to photograph. So you've got to find the right light and then put him against a green background usually works, works okay, well. Yeah, nice. And also with a white horse, you've got to be careful that he's not going to get blown out. Because mm -hmm. So it all just depends on, you know, and then I had a shoot once long ago where they wanted to shoot on the beach. Mm -hmm. She was a, ner a novice rider, but not a, not a nervous rider. Mm -hmm. So she had this young horse and he was this chestnut, which was this orange color. And her mother was, I think it was her 16th birthday, mm -hmm. and they wanted to have a photo shoot with a horse on the beach and the whole thing. So the mother said to me, well, what kind of clothes? I said, well, she can come whenever she wants to. Mm -hmm. um, but the best thing is to sort of wear, against, against an orange horse, or a chestnut horse as we call them, um, have like a blue. Mm -hmm. So she arrives with this flowing dress of this sort of midnight blue, and with that sunlight. And I, she said, is this going to work? And I'm like, 
you couldn't have picked a better dress. Yeah, he was yeah, absolutely yeah. stunning against those chestnut mm. horse. Um, and then he went home because we finished with him and he, it was his supper time, so he went home. But this young girl, she was playing the violin as well. Mm -hmm. So she had brought another dress um, and she had a violin and she was doing this on the beach. Yeah. And it actually just turned out to be such an awesome shoot and they bought the right clothes. And sometimes you get there and you think, is that really how are you going to look <laughs> in your photo shoot? Yeah. Um, at least come with your hair tied up neatly mm -hmm. or... Yeah, so just go the extra mile, um, clean your horse's ears, uh, his nose, his eyes, just so you don't have a whole lot of gunk in the eyes. Um, if you have a grey horse, um, just try and clean him a little bit better because grey horses are very good at staying black. Mm -hmm. um, they have I have a theory about that. My theory about grey horses are that they get born black. Mm. And so as they turn white, yeah. they get confused. Yes. And so they do everything in their power yeah. to be black again. Yeah. So they, they yeah, I had the same story with my older horse. He's a chestnut. And um, I've always said, next time I get a horse, I want to get a grey. Mm -hmm. And I went to say good morning to him. And then I went off to Nordic to photograph a show. It was winter. Yeah. And I got home. He was great. He'd found a white piece of mud. Oh. And he'd rolled in that. And he's like, am I grey enough for you now? <laughs> So I'm like, I won't tell you that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yes, he tried to be great for me. Okay. Um, it didn't really work for <laughs> They just, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure they read yeah. our minds. Yeah. In so a I second. think I'm glad about a chestnut, not a great. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, do you have, like the shoot you just mentioned about, you know, the girl mm. having really well dressed mm. and so forth, do you have a moment, like in your career, that you kind of really just stands out to you as, as one that you look back on when you're like 80 years old and still remember? Um, like a, a private shooter. Mm, mm, mm. There's two that I think have been really stand up because the one I've just talked, mm -hmm. spoken about, mm -hmm. about her being so novice but not nervous. Yeah, this yeah. young chestnut horse. And the, we did it at, um, at uh, Milk, Milk Boss mm -hmm. on the beach. And we could not have asked for better light. She had long dark hair, mm -hmm. so the, the light was catching her hair. This, the light on, on her with this blue dress and the chestnut and going through the water, it was just absolutely stunning. And then her with her violin mm -hmm. and that golden light. I mean, we just carried on shooting and shooting and shooting. And her mother said, um, we've been gone over an hour now. I said, no, no, it's fine. The light's <laughs> working. She's working. Yes, it's, it's carry on. on. We've got the light. Yeah. Let's carry on. Yeah. And sometimes I do say that the shoot is an hour. Um, and then they tend to think that if it's an hour, it's an hour. Mm -hmm. But if the horse or the model is performing with you, go with it, work with it. Mm -hmm. And if you end up shooting for two hours, you've got the light, you've got everything working. I've also had shoots where um, after 20 minutes, the horse is like, I want to do this, and not the ears are not going yeah, forward. Yeah, yeah. And then you say, okay, we either do this another time, or we'll just make a plan. Because mm -hmm. I've had it where a model and a horse were both, mm, no, do we want to do this now? I don't know what to do because it's just like they're both not cooperating. Mm -hmm. um, he would not put his ears forward. She was like, I don't like this. And <laughs> so that was really difficult. Mm -hmm. But um, another shoot that stands out was one in Stellenbosch up in the hills. And this girl had long blonde hair, gorgeous little figure, and I think she had three horses or something. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those Cape Town days where it's pouring with rain oh. and not raining. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then it pours with rain and then it's not raining. You know, four seasons mm -hmm. in one day. Mm -hmm. And um, I kept, kept talk, talking to the mother saying, yeah, we'll do it. No, we won't do it. Yes, we'll do it. And eventually at about four o'clock we said, okay, the sun is trying to shine, it, trying to shine, let's do it. Well, we did the shoot and we had the most amazing light. Mm -hmm. She was cantering bare back, the hair going. Um, and she was also quite a sort of prim and proper kind of quite shy girl. Yeah, yeah. And I thought this isn't going to be easy. And then I just started talking to her and saying, <clears throat> "How long have you had the horse? What have you done with him?" And she just started relaxing until eventually she was lying all over the horse mm -hmm. and she was just carrying on. And I was just photographing and got some really amazing shots. Mm -hmm. So I think those were probably two of my favourite shots shoots. But there've been lots of many others mm -hmm. that have been good. But those two, the light was just to get that. Awesome light, as you can imagine. Yeah, it's just your, and you just want to carry on, carry on, carry on. Um, mm -hmm. And then you do get the difficult ones where you get like bridezillas. <laughs> and um, but yeah, it's, mm. it's, it's very rewarding. Uh, yeah, yeah. Especially when people say, "Oh, I love your photographs." And, Are you going to be at that show? Oh, no, I'm not going to be at that show. Mm -hmm. And the police come, and like you feel like, okay, well, they know my work. They like my work. No, they I'm one yeah. so. Yeah. Mm. Um, 
you were talking about the light and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, I often think there's this whole stigma at the moment with um, photo editing programs mm-hmm. and, you know, mm-hmm. I remember a while ago there was a whole thing in the newspapers about models not looking the way that they actually look because yeah. they're so edited. How, how easy or hard is it to kind of change that complete dynamic, if you understand what I'm saying? Like, like you know, add something to a photo that really isn't there or, yeah. you know, like you were saying about the light and, and, and how easy it makes to photograph and how good that makes it look. You know, how easy or hard is it to add that in a program afterwards? Yeah, yeah. I try not to use... Um, a lot of photoshopping, mm-hmm. or I use Lightroom. Mm-hmm. I try and keep it as natural as possible. Mm-hmm. And if I see that maybe a bigger model, you know, bigger mm-hmm. weight, I try and get an angle of where to shoot. Do yes, I shoot yes. down? Do I shoot up? And usually with um, bigger people, you don't shoot up because then you get mm-hmm. there. So you try and shoot, and I try and shoot most everything at eye level. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm not a magician, so I can't make you five kilograms when you feel <laughs> 55 kilograms. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I try and keep it as natural as possible mm-hmm. and do the best I can to make that person, how big or how small they are, looking as good as you It's the same thing, you, get, you don't get very good looking horses, which is <laughs> also quite difficult to make them. Uh, so then you've got to find ticks and tricks and techniques to get them mm-hmm. to put their ears forward or to get them to put that alert looking. Mm-hmm. Luckily so far, I think most of the horses I've photographed have all been very pretty. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's difficult. I've seen it. I've seen it been to shows where you think. Okay, so this is a pre dressage horse and he really doesn't look like much mm, mm. and you just got a photograph and I mean the person loves their horse and mm. so he's got to make the horse look like he's grown, grown pre dressage horse and it's, yeah, so it's, mm. and obviously into shows like when you go to show shows yes. or dog shows where there's just a, a dog or a horse that just talks to you mm-hmm. and I'm photographing and I'm photographing and I'm like, Okay, yeah, you've got 50 photographs of that horse. I think there's some other horses you need to be busy with as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's the same also at dog shows. Mm. Um, you know, those little sort of, I don't know what they are, Maltese poodles mm. or something. They do their thing, but then you get a gorgeous Rottweiler who's like, you know, so many yes, cars. Yes. And it's like, okay, we must do the little ones as well. Or, you know, um, but I think it's also difficult because I think for judges, when they um, judge on dressage, if they don't like a thoroughbred and a chestnut, then it'll get mobbed up. Yeah. So it's very subjective. Mm. Um, and I try and be okay enough of that one now and move on to the next one. Yeah, I can understand. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier that you try not to pose people too much mm. when you're doing shoots mm. and things. Um, I know from experience the, the, the one photo, there's, there's a, a series of three photos that um, Jacqueline took of Danny way back when, oh, I must have been 2014, 2015, oh, something like you know, and, and mm. I saw exactly that, you know, mm. the, the post photos, okay, they're pretty, but, you know, she so got th- she got three moments that I didn't even think she caught on camera yeah. that to this day are some of my favourite yeah. moments, you know, yeah. in my life. I just think, I think post shots, they look post. Yeah. Um, I like to see the natural interaction between the rider and the horse mm. or the uh, handler and their dog or something. Um, this, okay, now look here, it's fine. And also I did a dog show. Um, a few months ago at Silver Mist mm-hmm. and there was such a lovely shot of a girl with her dog, I'm, I think he was a boxer or something, and she was playing with her, with her I think, mm-hmm. playing with her and I was going off and then she looked up at me and started smiling I'm like, yep. no. So I like to just try to sit quietly mm-hmm. in the background mm-hmm. and just, and this is why I actually prefer sh- um, photographing horse showing to dress up mm-hmm. because I look for when the horses are looking over there or they're getting cuddled or kissed mm-hmm. by the mm-hmm. owner or they've got a grass hanging out of their mouth or something like that. I look for that because it's completely natural and nobody knows the camera's on it. Mm-hmm. And I just feel that those make for the nicer shots. Um, me being a photographer for, or a horse photographer for 11 years, I cannot photograph my own horses. Um, my youngest is still kind of okay, oh there's a camera, let me look good. Mm. And my old man, he says, oh, no, I'm not posing again. <laughs> but he poses beautifully for other photographers. But for me, not the youngster hasn't quite gotten onto, you know, you're going to be photographed or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the old boy he says, no, no, I'm not photographing, I'm not posing for you. But he will post beautifully for other people. <laughs> so, yeah. I suppose it's one of those things, you know. Yeah. Oh, I had the same problem with my dogs. <laughs> I get nice photographs of, I get nice photographs of them with, with my cell phone. 
as soon as I bring up the big camera, they're like, oh no, yeah, mm-hmm. don't worry. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned that you prefer taking showing photographs to, get, for example, to a Do you think it's simply because during showing, um, showing is a bit of a high up and wet yeah. sport, mm-hmm. um, you know, and you have so much time in between when you're getting judged and when you're standing in line and and mm-hmm. and and. and, and. Where in dressage, you know, I think the riders often want photos of them within the competition yeah. arena. Yeah. And and they know that their every movement is being judged at that moment yeah. in time anyway, so, yeah. so it ends up being yeah. posed as yeah. well. And do you seem to find the same thing in terms of show jumping and equitation? Or um, I don't really know much about equitation, if I have to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, personally, I don't really enjoy photographing equitation. Um, that's why I prefer dressage or showing. And I like to do them mm-hmm. both. Yeah, so, but then it is difficult with the dressage because you, the rider wants to see the pretty pictures of mm-hmm. them in the dressage arena. Um, but it's also not so easy because you get a, f- a four out of ten and, and you know, you're on the wrong leg or whatever the case is, but they don't want to see that, they want to see the pretty pictures. Mm. And that's where I find, not that I do it, is the videography is good for dressage because you can see actually if your horse is hollow or mm. if he's not going forward enough or that sort of thing. So I think with, with still photography it's difficult because they want the pretty pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, you get pretty pictures of your horse in dressage and that's maybe not how he was, it was just a moment. Mm. Mm. I know with my, with my young horse, he went to his first show and he was a complete nightmare. But my friend took some really awesome pictures of him, mm. but it was in a split second that he just had the right frame. Yeah. Um, so dressage is, is different to me, but it's take thousands of photographs yeah. and delete thousands yeah. of photographs yeah. um, and then showing you're looking everywhere um, yeah. Yeah. To, to get them cuddling their horses or chatting to their friend next door mm. or, um, so but yeah, then jumping is all about timing yeah. um, you know to get that horse in the right frame as he's going over the air in, over in the air um, when it's difficult when you're doing pole on the ground <laughs> because <laughs> where how do you photograph yeah. them like yeah. Yeah. this there's nothing pretty about a horse mm. over a part of the ground. Mm. Even little, little jumps, the horse, like he can you know, drop over them. Yeah. Mm. So that's also difficult. So, and then you get the really high jumps, which is also difficult to photograph because then the horse is in the air. So you can't really. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, whereas if you do sort of one meter, one meter twenty, you can actually get where the horse's legs, back legs, have just left, left the ground and you can get to And then the horse's legs are up here. Mm. So yes, uh, jumping is all about time, mm-hmm. and I think dressage and showing is about um, the moment. Yeah. So, um, and it's a challenge, and also with private shoots, um, just to, if you've got a difficult horse that doesn't want to stand still, because you get a lot of those too, mm-hmm. um, they just, you know, okay, stand and then they turn three steps and then they're in that direction and you're like, okay, well, I did nothing that time. Yeah. So that's why I just shoot a lot and try and get paid mm-hmm. in the moment. Um, so yeah, I like it because it's a challenge, yeah. and that's why I like doing animals, especially cats, because you can't tell them to sit stay. And I've started photographing um, rescue kitties mm-hmm. that are, are um, looking for adoptions to be a horse. And, yeah. and I, I do it for nothing, because I feel that if my photograph can give that cat a home, it's my job done. Yeah. Um, but it's difficult because you've just got to shoot and shoot and shoot until you get that moment with the cat. I think cats are probably the most difficult to photograph and dogs are probably the easiest. Yeah. Uh, so no, I mean, I've often said to horses, okay, put your ears forward and they look at you like, why? And then you put your camera down and they put their ears forward. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yes, it's, it's challenging. I mean, that's what I like about doing animals. Um, yeah. Also love doing kids because they're yeah. so busy. And they can't sit still for five minutes, <laughs> so they're always bus- busy pulling flowers out of the garden, mm-hmm. or, um, fiddling with their fingers or whatever mm-hmm. they're doing. Um, I haven't attempted babies yet. <laughs> um, I think for me to hold a baby is dangerous. Um, I'd rather hold a baby animal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's. Um, um, yeah. Um, so we spoke about shows and individuals and stuff like that and, and I'm really glad you brought up that you you know do work for charity and things mm. like that. Um, do you think with the world becoming as digital as it is mm. now, I mean everybody's got Facebook, everybody's got Instagram and I'm not saying that I, there are, are going to be exceptions to that, yeah, but, yeah. you know. Um, 
but I, but I see a lot more of the SPCAs and the rescue mm-hmm. centres having Facebook and, and posting the, the animals mm-hmm. on. Do you think that you know there's a bigger market for that? And for example, you helping out a charity, do you think that there's a benefit in them getting a professional mm-hmm. out to, mm-hmm. to sponsor some time rather than them yeah. just doing it on a phone? Yeah, I, I think it is because I think with Facebook and Instagram and all the rest, it's much easier to you're putting it out to a much bigger audience mm-hmm. uh, so there's a better chance of you getting um, a, a cat, cat looking for a home mm-hmm. it's a better chance that he's going to find a home um, and I think with a proper camera mm-hmm. you get better light than with a cell phone mm-hmm. I have a friend who also um, fosters Kitif and she's been doing it for years and the one day she just said to me, I cannot get these kittens. She had three of them, which I have now taken one. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I cannot get these three kittens adopted out. Mm-hmm. I just, she's been taking phone, uh, pictures with her phone mm-hmm. and she's just, uh, I said, that's fine. I'll come through with my big camera and we'll try and take some photographs. We set up like a little studio in her room with <laughs> a window light and they've got that jungle gym. Mm-hmm. And I did all three individually and I did with them together playing, doing a whole lot of different stuff with flashlight and yeah. all the rest of it. Um, and then Donna did the photograph, sent them through to her, she put them on Facebook, and by that afternoon all of her, all the kittens had gone. Sure. So it's amazing what a, what a, as I call it, a big camera yeah. can do. Um, and as I say, I took one of the kittens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're allowed. You are. I have seven now, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so you are now. I, I, I think often people, and I'm, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with taking a photo with your phone yeah, or, no, or things yeah. like that, but I think often people try and shortcut, mm. you know, and mm. think that if I take a photo with my phone, it will be as good yeah. as a photo taken by a professional, mm. professional camera. Because let's be honest, you put a, profes- a camera in my hands, I wouldn't know which button <laughs> to push. So, you know, and, and I think also a lot of that comes with experience, I and mean, you've yeah. been doing it for 11 years. Yeah. Pretty sure that the photos you take now are different oh, than the photos so. you oh, took much. way I mean, back. I go back and see stuff that I did in 20, 2007, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, how did they photographs back? How can they have mm-hmm. bought it then? But um, yeah, and I mean, a lot of the horses I photographed in 2007 are not with us anymore, so yeah. Yeah. I have those memories. The problem with a cell phone is that it's a much more delay on a cell phone. Yeah. So if you've got a very fast moving horse or dog, mm. it's going to be a bit blurred. Or mm. uh, it's going to take time to take to yes, get the shutter yes. go. Mm. Whereas with a big camera, you go and you get maybe five, mm. five good shots, and one is just really you've got the horse or the yeah, yeah, dog yeah. in the right position. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think it is, everybody thinks they're a photographer with a cell phone mm-hmm. and I've been to shows where I was the official photographer, um, it was a big show show they had mm-hmm. and then obviously the riders, they get their sashes and their cups and the whole thing and they had a um, the rider got her sash on and the horse got these long rosettes and the cup, you know, standing mm-hmm. up this high on the ground next to the horse and I'm about to take a photograph and this mother comes with a cell phone and stands in front of me and I was like, Okay. Can you not see that I've got a long lens and I've got a big camera and then she comes with a cell phone in front of me. And I think if you've got it, that's fine. Go and take a photograph of your little girl winning her victim door or whatever. But if you see a person with a photographer who's got a big camera, then just step to the side. Um, so that can be a bit irritating. But yeah, it's all part of the all part of the job. So yeah. Yeah. Then at shows, um, you guys are often like close to the arenas or mm-hmm. in the arenas and so forth. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had an incident where a horse has gone hi and run over you? Or I'm not me personally, mm-hmm. and I usually always like to stand on the outside of the arena. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I don't want to have. I've been trampled by a horse before, not with a camera, mm-hmm. and it's not a pretty yeah. feel. Um, and also, I just feel that it's. I can just get more if I'm on the outside. Mm-hmm. Um, it does get a bit difficult when you're on the outside and then you want to do a jump here and there's like horrible jumps that side mm-hmm. and you get that in the background. Um, some people do go and stand in the middle of the arena. Um, and I mean, you can't do that in a dressage arena. Yeah. You know. um, but sometimes with the showing arena, sometimes I'll go and stand next to the judge, but not very often. I also don't think it's very, um, or I think it's a bit rude to stand next to the judge and then you can hear what they're saying yeah. about the horse. Um, so I also tend to try and stay, mm. me personally, I try to stay more on the outside, mm. um, depending on what I'm photographing. Mm. Um, but sometimes it can be a bit difficult and then you get other people standing in your way or mm. somebody jumps up in front of you. Or, no, well, now I've got a nice head, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, but uh, me, I personally, I like to stay on the outside, for the most part. Yeah. Um, 
them, yeah. Okay. No, no, I, I think in the same way that different photographers have different styles and yeah. different way of editing, mm. different photographers have different places mm. where they would be comfortable. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and I suppose also different things that they enjoy, I think. Yeah. You yeah. know, some people would like show photography more, some people, like you say, you, you enjoy that individual shot yeah. a bit more because yeah. it's, it's more love intensive yeah. uh, and you're not just clicking away and getting three yeah. thousand yeah. photos. Yeah. You know, yeah. You're getting the photos you want yeah. and, and you're getting yeah. the opportunity. Yeah, to and then I can always delete, I can always take 3,000 photographs on a private shoot. Mm. And I can delete 2,000 of them. Not thinking of, because with a show, it's difficult because you've got 50 riders or two or 100 riders. Mm, mm. You can't just toss out everything. And I've had where there have been riders, and there's not, not one nice photograph of one rider. Yeah. I think I've got to give them something. Mm. And then you go through them, and think, well, we'll put that one in. Mm, mm. And there's usually that rider that says, anybody more photographs of <laughs> me? So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite easy. Mm. So. And also people, a lot of people are wanting photographs for nothing. Yeah. They think anybody can take photographs. Mm. Um, but it's not just push the shutter and there's your mm. photograph. There's a lot of work that goes behind it. So, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. That's one of the reasons why I asked you in terms of editing, you know, mm. because if you think about it, you're spending eight hours, two days, so that's mm. about yeah. 16 hours. Mm. And then if you're editing another mm. two weeks on that, you so know, it's, it's a lot of time mm. and say all 50 by it, it's yeah. still a lot of time that you put into yeah. 50 rides of photos yeah, yeah. Okay. you know um where with the you know the one-on-one shoots or personal mm. shoots you take the photos you want it's an hour or yeah, however yeah. long you're comfortable spending there and the editing might be more labor intensive mm. you know you, you might be more finicky about yeah. it but you also know that these photos are sold and this yeah. is the package and this is what yeah, yeah, yeah you know you at the end of the day that you're going to get x amount Yes. You don't know when you come home from a show, you don't know if I'm going to sell one photograph or any photographs or 500 mm. photographs. You don't know what you're going to sell. Yeah. And I can, I can do a show tomorrow and in two years time people are going to start buying. Yeah, so I've had where I, I keep all my photographs. Mm -hmm. I've got photographs from 2007. Um, I keep them all on external hard drives. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a lot of people say to me, do you have a photograph I was at a show three months ago? And I said, yes, no, I've got everything. Mm -hmm. well, until I once had a break in and I sold three years of work, oh. which was hard, hard mm -hmm. to But I've had where somebody has come to me and said to me, I did a show two years ago at Stellenbosch. Um, I've unfortunately just had to put my horse down. Um, have you got a photograph? Um, and then I will luckily be able to go and find the photograph. And then they still have a photograph of the horse jumping, mm. or the horse doing its dressage or whatever. Um, or they remember that photograph. You know, oh, if, yeah, if yeah. he was bucking or he was rearing or something. They have you still got that photograph that you took two years ago I've just lost my horse? And mm. um, that stuff usually you can still go and find the photograph. Mm. And that just is just so touching for them. And usually I don't pay them, I don't make them pay me for that because it's just something. They want the picture for mm. special reasons. It's not just they want to, you know, I want my horse jumped yesterday, so I want the photograph. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's more like a sort of, I suppose, a compassionate yes, thing. Um, but that doesn't happen often, but I have had it mm. happen mm. once or twice, yeah. Mm. I remember when uh, we went to Old Woodlands Bay, Furnace. Mm. We went to Furlands and Urinda and I went through and Urinda was like, no, we're taking Caroline. I was like, okay, we're yeah, taking yeah. Caroline. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. You know, some of those photos, like, okay, you, the, my favourite photos that you've got, well, then you've got a couple of really good ones mm -hmm. of a warm-up and then you've got the flying changes, which yeah. I didn't yeah. think I was going to get anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's you know, mine on your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, well, I like that. Yeah. It's just, just, yeah. Um, you know, and, and I think, um, for me, mm -hmm. you know, the reason I buy photos from a show is even though you've got the test papers, yeah. even though you might have a video of it, mm -hmm. just having that photo and being able to go back to that photo yeah. and remembering the ride and yeah. remembering the feeling that you yeah, had, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it's just, it, to me, it's yeah. just like, ah. Oh. Yeah. I mean, to get those those special moments. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was at a show last week at Stillenbosch, a jumping show, mm -hmm. and this one horse came in the arena, this sort of grey horse came mm -hmm. in the, and all he wanted to do was buck. And I got a photograph of the horse it was facing more, more side on, yeah. but it gave this fuck, and the rider just has a smile on her face, <laughs> and the tail's in the air, and I'm just thinking, and it's just such, I mean, I, if it was mine, I would put it on canvas. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's those moments mm -hmm. that I look for. Um, also, in jump, show jumping, when the riders fall, 
<laughs> Especially if it's a very good friend of mine and yeah. they fall, I just freeze. And then they say to me, did you get the photographs? <laughs> I'm like, no. Um, but yeah, so I try, if, I, if I'm photographing the jump that they fall at, I keep just trying to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't post it. Um, if they contact me privately afterwards and say, have you got a picture of my falling? Um, then I will email it in quietly on the side. Yeah. If they want to paste it on Facebook, they can. That's not mine. Yeah. I know a couple of, many years ago, I fell off my horse and I broke my arm, yeah. um, my wrist. I had to have surgery and pins stuck mm-hmm. in my arm. And I wish somebody had videoed the fall or photographed it so mm-hmm. I could actually see. I fell off in a walk. And it's like, how the hell did I go to hospital and have surgery and all the rest of it? When I wish I could have seen how I'd landed. Mm-hmm. And I got up and I thought, oh, well, I know. Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think that's also why the riders want to see their falls. Mm. They want to see what happened and or how that horse got hurt or how they landed or whatever. Mm. Mm. So sometimes I do remember to photograph the fall and photograph photographers around me or people, mm. did you get that? Did you get that? My, did my little girl's just fallen off a horse. And I'm like, yes, I did get that. <laughs> Look! <laughs> so yeah, that's... Yeah. Um, I remember I was still working at Sun Valley Stables at the time and um, one of my students wrote this beautiful little white mare and um, the mare <coughs> had a moment in the middle of a dressage test and I think a movement was change rain in a canter and then try to exit oh, a canter yeah. on, like, just before the next mm-hmm. corner and as she just closed her fingers on the rain, the pony just exploded. But at the time, she was really good showing a dress of right, so she had this perfect little, pretty little look yeah. on her face. And the photos, because she then, obviously, as she landed, she looked up and she tried to find the photographer. <laughs> and then luckily, the photographer got like a whole series and sequence of yeah. the pony exploding, oh, little girls sitting and then, you know, yeah. coming promptly off. So I think, you know, like you say, you, you don't post those on no. Facebook, but, no. but when someone asks for mm. them, I think often people forget many riders, I'm not saying all riders, but yeah. many riders, we, we have a sense of sense of humour, yes. you know, and if it's a special form, yeah. then it's like, ooh, yes. please tell me you got that on camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, I agree. Um, especially when they fall at the jump that I'm photographing, mm-hmm. then, but sometimes I've had people saying, did you get my fall? And I'm like, no, sorry, you were down there and yeah, 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 I could yeah. get you. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was standing at a show last week at Cinemosh, and the one girl came, up, came off, mm-hmm. and I was standing next to Tyro, and he's like, did you get that? And I'm like, yes, I got it, did you get it? And he's like, we're both sharing pictures, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're both on the same mm-hmm. fall, but obviously you were standing at a little bit of a different angle yes, to me. Yes. Um, so yes, it's very exciting. And, but yeah, I mean, I think the one time his daughter fell off, yes. and he just broke. So I'm like, Tyro, did you get that? And he's like, no, that was my daughter. <laughs> Don't worry, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. also, it's also nice that you have a backup that if you, mm-hmm. you miss. Mm-hmm. Um, last Friday I did a trick dance, which is also not my forte, but again, I just photographed. I just did, they did their thing, and I mean, she was just naturally laughing, and she was a bit sort of, um, not very relaxed in front of the mm-hmm. camera, mm-hmm. and I could see, she's like, okay, that's enough, that's enough, and I just carried on, and eventually she liked the camera, yeah. and she started posing, and mm-hmm. I just photographed, and I mean, there's one photograph of her just standing, looking there, and it's such a nice photograph, just mm-hmm. a natural photograph of her just looking off into the distance. Um, sunset was amazing, mm-hmm. but it was very difficult in the beginning because she was a bit sort of like, I don't know how to be in front of a camera. Yeah. Um, and that's why I stand behind the camera, because I don't like being in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But I'll make an exception if I'm with my horse or my dogs. Yeah, exactly. But um, otherwise, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, and then... Um, so you've been in the industry for about 11 years now and you know, obviously grown and, and with experience changed the way that you do things. Um, knowing what you know now, you know, I'm not expecting you to be a fortune teller, but mm. where do you see yourself going in the next 10, 11 years? You know? um, I would like to do weddings. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, obviously dogs and horses is my first love. Yeah. Um, but honestly, there's not that much money in it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to go to weddings. Uh, I'm not the right person to for a wedding photograph, but that's where the money is. Mm-hmm. And last year I did 12 weddings with Tirinda mm-hmm. as a second shooter, and she was a, a, I learned a lot from her. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was nice sitting in the background and then letting her do all the posing, which I think has given me confidence mm-hmm. to now start to go out on my own. Um, I've got my first wedding, my own first wedding in November. Mm-hmm. Um, she's actually a friend of mine. She's, um, it's going to be an interesting wedding to photograph because she's actually got multiple sclerosis. Um, but she's such a positive person. Mm-hmm. She also rides, actually, which is also nice. 
and um, I did an engagement. She put them in December, mm -hmm. and she was like, "I'm throwing my legs away. Let's stand here." And I said, "Can you stand like this? Can you?" And she's like, "Yeah, I know." It was. She was amazing. She was so positive, and um, so yeah, I think it's. She's going to be my first wedding, mm -hmm. and hopefully something more of that will come mm -hmm. out. So. That's where I want to go because I think that's where the money is, and maybe it'll be good for my personality as well to maybe get me out of myself a little bit, mm -hmm. get more confident. Yeah. Because um, I think I'm pretty confident with the horses and the dogs and mm -hmm. all that now, and now it's a bit more to try and be confident with talking to people mm -hmm. and um, arranging people mm -hmm. and not come say, okay, well maybe stand like this, stand here, just say, okay, mom, stand here, and mm -hmm. be able to know how to pose people can yeah. also be quite tricky, yeah. especially when you get bride sitters or people who are, are very uncomfortable in front of mm -hmm. the camera. To make them feel comfortable is my job. Yeah. Um, and also my job to make myself comfortable. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And like you said earlier, you know, you, you kind of like the challenge of story. Yeah. It might be a good new challenge for Yes, you. exactly, yeah. Uh, and I have, done, I have done smaller groups of people, like mm -hmm. trick dances mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So it's also a bit of a stepping stone to handling mm -hmm. a big, somebody's real special day. Yeah. Um, and I think with this wedding I'm doing in in um, November, it's going to be very special because she is she has got multiple, multiple sclerosis, and but I think it's going to be easy because she's she's so easy and she's so positive mm -hmm. and uh, and yeah, so it's it's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. Like a really good start. In yes. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, tra chatting to Rinda last year, it was. Interesting, what different people they have had to photograph. Mm -hmm. um, you know, same-sex weddings and Indian weddings and Muslim weddings, and um, it's just it's just different. What, yeah. You know, and what different cultures like, or the traditional, or the not not the traditional. Yes. Um, so it's interesting. It's interesting to see what people want for their weddings. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. yeah, that sounds very very exciting. So I met you all the way back in 2017. I say all the way back, it's only like two years. It's a long time ago. <laughs> um, and I think one of the reasons I clicked with you is because we have the same trainer. Um, and I think often, you know, when you train with the same person and you're exposed to the same thoughts and thought processes and, and you know, thinking behind training, you know, that you end up building a bond through that, mm. you know, especially when you definitely agree with what they're doing. Yes. Um, and so I think when you, how old was um, Royal when you moved to Solingest? He was six. Sure. Yeah. He's now eight. Yeah, yeah. he was six. Mm. And, and like you said, you have an older horse who's just turned 29. I mean, for a thoroughbred, yeah. that is insane. Mm. Yeah, he'll be 13 in December. Yeah. You know, and, and yes, like you know, like you've said to me that he does have a few health issues, but but it's at the moment it's maintainable, yeah. you know, and and as hard as it is, you know, you kind of know yeah. where that would go anyway. Mm -hmm. um, how has Royal been different to Bo? Royal is a lot more brave okay. than Bo. Um, Bo is a lot more stubborn. If Bo says no, it's no. Mm -hmm. Royal Royal will say no. Okay, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. If Bo says no, that's no. Mm -hmm. um, he's not crazy, well neither I'm not crazy about going in the horse box. Mm -hmm. um, Bo's more happy to go in a, in a fender box or a nutty box. Mm -hmm. I think it's a bit wider for okay. me. But if a crisp box, which is that part of the glass, yeah, yeah, yeah. if that comes to fetch him, he gets to the rim and he says, I am not going in there. And that's it. So he, yeah, when Bo says no, it's no. Mm -hmm. Roy is a little bit more willing. A little bit more brave. Um, when I was riding Bo in his younger days, mm -hmm. if we got to say a bunch of tires, yeah, and he says I'm not going past that, he's not going to go past that. Roy will get to that bunch of tires, and he'll say I'm not going past that, and I say yes, you are going to pass that, and he's okay, and he goes yeah. up and he sniffs it till eventually he's touching it and he's yeah. kissing the pipe, and then he goes through. Okay. The other day, and he's he's a very young eight. He's not mm -hmm. he's yeah. very immature. And the other day I took him on an outright on his own and they were busy with chainsaws in the forest. And he just looked at us and went straight through it. Mm. Whereas Bo would have said, no, I'm not doing it. So they've got completely different personalities. Roy is more willing, more braver, um, but yet Bo is just nothing phases him. Mm. So it takes, a, it takes a lot for something to phase Bo, mm -hmm. whereas anything will, will yeah. 
be like, what's that, what's that, the royal? Um, and I think Bowes told royal a lot of stuff. Yeah. Keep calm, like, everything's fine. Um, so, yeah. Um, and so you, uh, did you compete Bo when he was young? Yes, he also did dressage. Okay. Yeah. And how long did you have between the two, like when Bo retired and when Royal started competing again? Bo, I think Bo did his last show in 2005, mm -hmm. and Royal's just started now, so it's a good 13 years. Oh. Um, so yes, I got into bad habits mm -hmm. from just hacking for all 13 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, I, when I got Bo, he was about nine, and I got him eight or nine, and he'd already he already had the schooling behind him. Yeah. Royal had nothing. He came off the track, mm -hmm. and when I got him three years ago, it was the first time he ever went into a dressage arena, sure. and he didn't know what a dressage mm -hmm. arena was. I then started having lessons with Andrea, and she's been absolutely amazing, teaching me and my horse. Not what she teaches your horse, mm -hmm. who is much more exactly. advanced. Yeah. Um, teaching. I'm much more. Maybe I'm much more advanced rider than what Royal. We Royal came yes. from. So I've been able to, to help him, mm. and she's been able to help me help him because he's yes, young. Um, and he absolutely loves her. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> yes, uh, he sees her and he just ignores me, mm. and he walks up to her. And it's, it's strange because she's never given him treats, she's never done anything to make him love her. Mm. Um, but he loves working for her, um, he creeps towards her. Yeah. Um, and she's like, no, you must move, you know, you must move, you must walk. And he's like, I'm standing here, with my cuddle. Mm -hmm. um, and what's really nice is before, when I was having lessons with Bo, I had a woman teaching me, and I always try to get out of my writing lessons. Mm -hmm. I just, she was mothering me. She was teaching, treating me like a child. I mean, she, she, she taught kids, yeah. I'm not a kid. She thought that Bo had all the talent in the world. And we got to a stage where we were teaching him flying changes before he retired. And um, I just, I was always trying to find an excuse. Mm. I'm too tired, I've got a cycle race, or whatever. Um, but with Andrea, I want to make two lessons a week. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna find it. I know that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's just brilliant. Mm. With me and Royal, and she doesn't want to push him. Um, rather get to where he's going slowly. Um, and I don't know, I've just recently moved my horses mm -hmm. to a new yard, which is nearer to me. Mm -hmm. Roy is going even better there. Oh. Um, at the place before, he, I felt like he was stuck. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have to say to him, well, wait. Where, rather than pushing him forward and say, come, move. Yeah. Now I've set him and slow down. He is pretty much, the arena is pretty much out in the open, yeah. in the middle of nowhere. He's got horses all around him, horses that go into the trees, that go rolling next to the, next to the paddock, uh, next to where the arena is. Sheep, and Big Nicolo is over there, yeah. and he's learnt, or he's learning how to focus now, yeah. and not let distractions get to him. And he's just, he's much more forward, he's, he's just going really, really nicely. It's not a fancy dressage arena, it's just an arena on the ground. Um, and I know Andrea mentioned that the footing is different. Mm -hmm. I think um, where you were before, I know the sand's quite mm -hmm. thick, especially through the corners, yeah. which you know is fine if you're riding a 20 meter circle. Mm -hmm. But you know when you when you're starting mm -hmm. to practice a test and you're having to ride mm -hmm. corners, riding through really thick sand, yeah. and and you know from what I've seen from well, he's not small, no. but he's not. Like Danny's is big and yeah. bony, and, and Royal isn't built like that. No. You know, where then when the when the footing gets really mm. thick, they they struggle to trudge mm. through it. Mm. Where I think Danny, because he's much chunkier, he just kind of steps on top of it. Yeah, and doesn't yeah, bother yeah. Him. yeah. Um, I, I've I've had I think it's three lessons at the new place, mm. and it's, it's it's chalk and cheese. He's like a different horse. He's easier to work with. Yeah. Um, I mean, the other day, as I say, he's a prelim horse, so he's very very baby. Mm. And it was last week, I thought, well, let me try and do an advanced movement, or let's call it an advanced movement for Royal. <laughs> yes. So I explained it all to them, and we were going, we were at a walk, going down the long side, and I said, but you must walk forward. Because at A, which is in the middle of the bottom, mm -hmm. I was going to make him canter from a walk. Mm -hmm. And I thought, there's no way he's going to get this right, because this is, for him, it's an advanced movement. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's I, yeah, yeah. It's, it, I think it, it, the first time you really see it is late novice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So I thought, well, I just want to see how he throws his toys or mm. how he handles everything. So I said, you need to walk forward 
and he started walking forward and then at, at the A, I said, put my leg on him and I said, now canter. And he did one stride and he canter. On the right leg, on the right knee, and I was like, and he took off down the long side. <laughs> I took what I did. Yeah. Um, and then I did it on the other end, yeah. so even better. And mm. I was like, wow. Yeah. Um, and I, he, he did, he never learned that before. And he, he was brilliant. Mm. Um, and yeah, I mean, he's got sheep walking around him. He's got other horses watching him when he rides the, the arena. As I said to Andre, he just doesn't feel stuck. Yeah. I have to say to him, I'm slow down. Um, so he's really working out. I remember the first show you took him to at Europa. Shame, he had his eyes on swings. Oh, no. But I mean, you took him back, what was it? It was the week before the next show. Yeah, you took him back and you mm -hmm. let him have a look around. And, 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 and as far as I understand, the show after that, he was, was yeah, fine. I took him, it was just Andrea and me and Royal when we took him and they put a dressage arena in the arena for us and there was jumps on the other side, yeah. I mean, jumps like this. And um, Andrea said, just take him into the arena in hand. Mm. Well, I mean, a leaf threw across there and he just about to have heart failure. <laughs> and he's, you know how they mm -hmm. dance this and he's in hand. After about 15 minutes, Andrea said to me, get on him. I thought, now there was nobody else there, mm -hmm. no other horses, there was no friends, it was just the three of us. So I thought, got on him. And he was, he was still uppity, but he was much calmer than mm -hmm. in my hand. Mm -hmm. Took him into the arena and he was a bit leaf across the arena and he was... After about 10 minutes, he just started... It was like he took a deep breath yeah. and he said, I've got this. To make sure we were cantering circles and trotting mm -hmm. circles and he was fine. We took him to the show the next week mm -hmm. and he was like, okay, like I'm at home. Mm -hmm. And he did... I mean, the tests were brilliant, but he got through them without having a hissy fit. Um, in the second test, he did the best 20 minute circle I've ever done. I, mean, I couldn't stop smiling, <laughs> lost a stirrup, and yeah. he just carried on. Yeah. Um, he was amazing. Mm. And now that we've moved yards, we now want to get um, to, make, to get him to be friends with Stonewash Riding Club. Yes, um, yeah, that's quite close to you. Yeah, it's very close. And, um, but I think Andrea says that she just wants us to, to train him a little bit more mm. so that he's a little bit more trained before he goes to a show. Yeah. Um, and just but yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he's going because he's just going in the last two weeks, he's just going like a different horse. Mm -hmm. um, and what I like about it is he really enjoys his work. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't want him to go into the dressage arena and then get stale. Yes. Um, and where we are now, we can go on outrides for four hours. Cool. And where I was before, the ground was quite thick. Mm -hmm. And I used to go for canters, but I always used to hold him back, so I was just scared he would fall into a pothole or something. Mm -hmm. Where he is now, he can canter, and I, I can just let him go. I don't have to say there's a pothole, careful. Mm -hmm. um, and we can just go for four hours. Um, there's hills, and, and it just might make him a little bit more fit. Yeah. To be able to help himself a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And me, I also need to get fit, so... <laughs> but yeah. Um, mm. So it's looking good, and it's just so nice to be closer to them. Yeah, as right. opposed to you know, driving 20 minutes as opposed to driving an hour. Yeah, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that I enjoyed when you said, specifically, and I, I experienced this with Andrea as well, is that she doesn't, she keeps in mind the horse's age, yeah. but she doesn't use that as a measurement of where the horse should be. Yeah. You know, like for example, um, the world being quite a, a immature mm -hmm. age, mm -hmm. um, you know, from, from what I've seen from him and like at the, the mm -hmm. first show that I went with you guys, he was very like overwhelmed, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. something you wouldn't expect yeah. normally of an age group. Yes, yeah. um, but you know, she doesn't expect him to do something yeah. because he's eight. Yeah. And in the same way, you know, with Danny because he's an 18 year old, yeah. she doesn't expect him to fall apart just because he's 18. Yeah. You know, yeah. each horse is trained mm -hmm. at its own pace yeah. within the boundaries of good horsemanship. Yeah. Yeah. You don't pardon me, um, you know, and the, the one thing that I'm really enjoying is that constant ask for more. Without yeah. being pressured. Yeah. It's just, yeah. well, you did this right last week, so now yeah. let's do one more thing. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, I just find with Royal, he's easy to draw a duck bow. Mm -hmm. um, when Bo retired, I could just sit down and he was not cantering. Yeah. Royal's at that stage now, mm -hmm. and I just sit down and he knows it's an age for a canter. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, it took a bit of time, he's like, well, I don't know what you want me to do. Mm -hmm. Then, as soon as he got it, he's like, oh, I must canter then. Mm -hmm. Um, and just every week he just progresses, progresses. Um, and I said to Andrea a couple of months ago, I said, yeah, if we can get him to novice, that will be great. She said, no, he'll make medium. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe not next year, but he will. Mm -hmm. 
And I think if you don't push them and don't break them mm. and keep them willing to work, uh, he just loves Andrea and so I don't know, I like her way of teaching. Mm. She doesn't scream and shout and carry on, um, but she's firm. Mm. You know, she doesn't let us get away with nonsense. Don't tell her you've been to gym the day before and you stiff because then she'll make you work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I think with her background and her training, we couldn't ask for a better instructor. Yeah, I agree. Um, um, I'll never forget our oh, uh, Danny, I think we've been riding with her for a month for two months. Yes. And he'd always been very good, mm. you know, although mm. I'd had bad screening sessions personally, but whenever we were in the mm. lesson, he's always been very yeah. good. Yeah. And uh, I rode a horse um, before I rode him, before I had my lessons. Mm. Um, I was asked to just school a horse, mm. um, and he absolutely shut down on me. He was difficult, he was hard, he was, mm. oh, he was like borderline horrible. Yeah. And I remember riding and wanting to burst out into tears. Mm or mm. you know, getting so frustrated that, that you kind of want to take it out of your horse and you go, no, you calm yeah, yeah. And, and I'll never forget that lesson was the lesson that absolutely cemented my relationship with Andrea yeah. because she didn't lose her temper, yeah. she didn't get angry at me, she didn't yeah. get difficult with me, yeah. she just kept talking mm. in a kind and calm yeah. manner, like I couldn't just do what I wanted, yeah. I knew I had to, mm. you, you know, she was firm about yeah. it, but, but She's not ugly about it. Exactly, and if it wasn't for her, I promise you, I would just burst out into tears and just throw my toys. And she just has a way of being able to adapt, you know, when you're really on form and you're really good, then then she picks it up and she, you know, she's happy with you. When you're having a really bad day, she she gently carries you through it. You know, she doesn't allow you to fall apart about it, which which I think is awesome because you're going to have a day like that at a show. Of course. Oh, yeah. You know, you're going to have a day where you just want to go, no. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how she handled... Me and Will at that show at Europe when he threw his toys. She wasn't like, okay, that's it, I'm not teaching you anymore. Mm. Um, maybe it showed her that he's like, oh, I don't know, but he's got this sort of, I can do this, but I'm not quite sure where, I'm, where am I? Kind of thing. Mm. And the next time he proved it to, he proved it to us. Um, and I just like her way of, the way she works with the horses. Mm. She doesn't get off them. She doesn't um, shout and scream at them and make them feel... Well, I'm doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, with Royal being young and as young as he is, uh, immature as he is, I thought I would never get that round of yes, yes. I just gently play with him and he's now starting mm-hmm. to come and hold it on his own now. And we're teaching him that he needs to actually carry it. I can't be there to carry it all the time. And he just wants to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's with, with Danny as well. They just want to please her. Yeah. Because they like her they like her. And I think it's very important that you as a rider and your horse likes your instructor. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Andrea walks and if she's walking like this, Roy also walks like this. Yeah. She likes to just walk next to me. Yeah. But he's like behind her everywhere and he sees her coming and he's like, oh. he doesn't sort of get like, oh my goodness, now I'm a lesson. Mm. Um, like, what are we going to do today? I know sometimes with Danny, because at the moment we're starting the baby PR, no, and wow. all he wants to do is wiggle out of it. And <laughs> when she was riding him with my hand was oh, like, yes, out of action. I remember her going, no, not like that. And then he go, but, but I want to do it like this. And I, I'll never forget the first few lessons I had where I was back on riding. He kind of like pretended mm. that he wasn't going to give her a cuddle. Oh, yeah. And then she'd go, okay, fine. And she'd turn around and he'd be like, no, but I actually want to cuddle. <laughs> And, and that to me was so exciting, you know. I know we often hum- put human emotions yes, in yeah. horses, and, yeah. and, and it's less complicated for them than, than it is. Yeah. But, you know, you look at a horse like that and you go, like, really, you just actually want to be accepted. Yeah. You just want to be part of the herd. You, yeah. you, yeah. Just, you yeah. just want everybody to say that you're okay, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, and it's so funny when sometimes they say, no, but I don't, oh, wait, I, I, I want to have an ego, or oh, wait, I don't actually have an ego. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They yeah. Around. No, it's a, I've had an animal communicator come out quite a long time for what it's worth, I'm a bit skeptical, mm. but, you know, and um, she was she was talking to my old horse and then she went to talk to Royal mm. and Bo wouldn't leave because she said Bo wants to stay there so that he can hear what Royal's got to say yeah. and he wanted to be in it. And um, she was asking me, or she said, is there anything you want to ask him? So I said, does he like his, his instructor? So she says, yes, he likes his instructor, but sure, she works him hard. <laughs> And he says, but I can do what Danny does. <laughs> so I'm like, well, no. He wants to do the rain back and he wants to do everything else. He, he can do it. Yeah. 
They're the same colour too, so all exactly. Yeah. But he's convinced he can do what Danny's doing. Um, and he can't understand why he's got to get his legs underneath him. So she said, he actually needs to see. So I, I said, well, the one time when you were mm-hmm. having this, I said, now you see what Danny's doing, you see it? Mm-hmm. He's watching like this, I mean, that's what you've got to do. But he is convinced in his head also, she told me, that he couldn't do that dance. So. But yet he falls apart at Europe, so... <laughs> That's a big step up. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think sometimes, you know, we, we forget that they get scared, mm-hmm. you know, especially if we take them to them to a show yeah. and it's a brand new environment yeah. and there's smells that they don't know. And you know, for, for Royal, yes, um, Mooney went with, but I mean Royal and Mooney don't pad up together, no. you know, and, and no. Royal is attached to Bo's hip. Oh, terrible. So so you know, for him to have gone to somewhere without Big Brother yeah. there, yeah. without his safety net, yeah. it's been quite scary. I would have thought so. And I said to Andre in the beginning, must we take Bo to shows with with him? Mm. He said, Don't take Bo anywhere yet. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise it's just gonna be a crutch. And um, and that's what I'm I'm scared of. I mean I know I won't say soon, but not too far away, I'm going to have to say goodbye to them. Yeah. And I don't know what Royal's going to do, because they all are like this. Yeah. Um, I take Royal out of the paddock and both shouts and screams. Mm-hmm. I take Royal out of the paddock and Royal shouts and screams. Yeah. Even though there's horses around, yeah. it's just I need my buddy. Mm-hmm. This afternoon, um, I tried to put Royal in the paddock, it was pouring with rain, and Bo went into the paddock no problem, and Royal wouldn't go in the paddock that way because of the electric fence and yeah. there was a horse standing there. And Bo's in the paddock shouting at him, like, come. He wouldn't go that way because there's a horse in that paddock with electric <laughs> fence and there's horses on that side that might bite him. I was like, oh, oh, what do you get you into the paddock yeah. somewhere? And Bo was calling, calling, calling. Um, so eventually I had to open the gate and I just said to the other horse, you stay there because he's a bit of a bully. He yeah. has to go through two horses' paddocks to get yes, you. Yeah. Um, and thank goodness the other horse didn't do anything, mm. but Royal has been charged by him. So yeah. he's like, but sort of, uh, and then the other side, there's a horse, horses next to the paddock, uh, next to the fence, and there's a gate that he cannot fit through. Bo's just fitted through the gate, because mm. he's a bit bigger, but Royal can't fit through this no. gate, you know? And there's all this electric wire, and horses here, and a horse there, I can't do this. And that side, that horse is a bully and chases me, and I, and I uh, anyway, actually, yeah, I had to make a plan, mm. and I just said to the, the grey over there, I said, you just please stay over there. Mm. And Bo's calling. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous how they are just so attached, and I don't know, I don't know if I keep them together or if I actually separate them, it's just... Yeah, it's really, really hard. And I think if I separate them, it's, it's been cruel, I can't, I can't do that. Um, and I said to, I said to the girls at the, at the stables, I said, what's going to happen when I have to say goodbye to Bo mm-hmm. as well? And she said, no, 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 we'll make a plan, and she said to me, does he like me? So I said, who oh, he loves me. Yes. Yeah. So... He's yeah. a bit of a stud muffin that place, so just don't worry about it, we'll make a plan. But it's going to be hard, because yeah. um, there are so much tension. It's That's exactly the reason why um, I know a lot of people say to me, oh, but we need to have Danny and Rooney stay the next to each other and let's go to shows together. Mm. But, I mean, what then ends up happening is if I want to go to a show and Rooney doesn't want to go, yeah. then they're going to fall apart. You yeah. know? If Rooney wants to go jumping. Mm. You know, mm. and, and the two of them get along really well and I'm, yeah. I'm very grateful for the relationship that two of them have mm. in the paddock. Mm. But I'm, I'm just not quite mm. willing to let them get yeah. that attached to yeah. each other. They need to be mm. able to function independently. Yeah. And that's why I do a lot of work with Royal on his own. Mm. Um, I take him out a lot on his own. Um, and if there's a scary tire or a scary rock, he's going to do it on his own. And he's got to go past with Bo when I was riding Bo. Um, if he said, no, I want to go that way, then I said, okay, we'll go that way. Yeah. If Royal said he wants to go that way, I said, we're going to go straight. Are we going to go? Mm-hmm. I want to go. He must learn that when he gets to treat, do his duties, he will have privileges yeah. like where Bo is. Bo has been where Royal is. Um, so Bo does have privileges. Yeah. And I think it's weird, that's where Royal gets a bit upset because it's like, but Bo can go where he wants to go, why can't I? Yeah. Um, and I think he got a bit upset at the previous place because Bo would get lunch, but he didn't. Yeah. And it was like, well, why is Bo getting lunch and not me? And it's like, well, because Bo's owned it and Bo's health is not as good as yours. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and we're just going through a hard time now with Bo because he's just been diagnosed with laminitis. And now he's got special shoes, and um, so I think we just because I really thought it was the end. Yeah. So luckily, it's, we can can treat him, mm. but I need to tell them that you know, well, Bo is a lot older than you. Yeah. There's 20 years between the two of them. Um, so yeah. 
and I don't know if he needs to be there to see to see him go or or go as they've been seen by a lot of his friends go the moment. So but you know, he's doing well. Mm. He's got new shoes on, I'm sure he'll be going Yeah, the, the horses I've worked with that have been laminating mm. and then mm. have new shoes put on. Um, especially with the fact that it's been sore for a while, yeah. you know, it's mm-hmm. not a, a brand new laminitis. No. Um, that they, they they change quite dramatically, yeah. quite quickly. Yeah. You know, as soon as they realise that, hang on a second, the shoe's helping me yeah. put the weight in a different mm-hmm. place that means that my feet don't hurt. They, yeah, you know, they change yeah. quickly. Yeah. And I think Bo is one of those horses that hides his pain, mm. doesn't let you know that he's as sore as he actually is. Okay. Uh, and I think in the last couple of weeks he's been saying to me, listen, I can't, I can't shut mm. And I've just had an amazing event come out. It's really spent time with him. And usually with um, with an old horse, you kind of think, he's old, put him in the ground. Yeah. But he was, he spent 45 minutes with him the other day. He spent 45 minutes with him yesterday x-raying him. And we got to the core of what's hurting him. Yeah. And now hopefully we can, we'll never fix him, but make him a bit more comfortable. Yeah. And today after he got his new shoes, he was like, come, let's go, I feel good. And it was like he was, he was actually motoring on his new shoes. Yeah. Um, and then with, obviously, his diet as well. Mm. Hopefully that will also help him feel better. Mm. Uh, and the vet said no more riding. Um, yeah. But definitely taking the lead on his own or on his own well. So. so in terms of diet, what are you changing? Okay, well, he was getting, obviously, concentrates. Mm-hmm. It's hard food. Um, and we have to have taken that all away because of the sugar. Yeah. He can't have any sugar mm-hmm. and carbohydrates. Okay. Um, which just aggravates the laminitis. Yeah. So now he has to live on TEF, mm-hmm. which is apparently, sh- I don't know if it's sugar free, but it's got it's, much it's sugar. Much, yeah, it's much lower in sugar, much higher in protein. Yeah. yeah. And then he's also getting a full time balancer mm-hmm. as okay. a concentrate. Yeah. Um, and then he shoots. Okay. Um, and I'm. I'm very naughty because I cannot not treat them. Yeah. I either get you soup cubes yeah. or carrots. And I asked the vet today if I can try a cucumber with him. Yeah. And he said a cucumber will probably be okay. Yeah. So hopefully we need a cucumber. So it's water. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so he's got some chew, yeah. yeah. Um, and if he feels he's getting a carrot in a different colour. Mm. Ah, probably. Um, yeah. So yeah, he said no trying with a mm. cucumber. Otherwise he's just going to have to Except that his treats are going to be cuddles and kisses and chatting yeah. to him. And um, so, yeah, I'll have to give royal treats from the corner. Mm-hmm. And then, but I, I feel I need to give him something. Yes. I've been doing it for 20 years. <laughs> um, when you spoke to the vet about the laminitis, did they kind of give you an indication it is age related or, you know, is it kind of like one of those things where, well, we don't know exactly why? We don't know exactly why, but it is probably age related. The first thing the vet said to me yesterday, or uh, um, the other day when he saw him, is does he always have a long coat like this? So I said he always gets a long coat like this in winter, yes. um, but he loses it very quickly. Um, and then I showed him a picture that I had taken in, in um, February where he didn't have any coat at all. And he said, okay, because he was in, immediately thinking cushies. Mm-hmm. But he hasn't got that curly, it's long, yeah. but it's not curly yeah. and like a sheep club. So he said, okay, and then we trotted him out and he, I think he had suspicions of um, laminitis. Mm-hmm. I think at one stage he would could also be navicular, yeah. um, but he didn't mention the navicular. Mm-hmm. And then um, asked me how far I want to go with him being old. So I said, well, if we x-ray him, then at least you can find what's the cause, if it is anything in the foot. Yeah. Um, and he x-rayed all four feet, and he's got laminitis on all four feet, and chronic laminitis in the right front. Um, and then said, okay, put the shoes on, change his diet, um, and the first thing he says to me is, don't worry, if it's in him over the rainbow, yet we can treat him. Yeah. So I was like, okay, great. Um, because he's been part of my life for 20 years. Yeah. Um, and he's my best friend. Mm-hmm. And Royal's my best friend too, but we've been through a, a longer road. Um, so, yeah, if the new shoes and the food can help him function better, mm-hmm. then we'll keep him going. And I said to the vet, look, I don't want to be poor. I don't want to think of myself. Mm. He says, no, no, no. He says, he's, he doesn't need to go yet. So, yeah. I, like, okay. I mean, I don't know if we need to say goodbye yeah. to him. So, um, but hopefully this, this will help and he can be happy. And he is happy. I mean, he looks good. He has a lost condition. Um, and yeah, I think if he'd only let us know sooner how sore he actually was. Yeah, but um, I think in the last couple of weeks, he's like, I can't do this. Mm. 
um, and I've had a fantastic vet, um, and he's actually a professor in this kind of thing. Cool. So I couldn't have asked for all mm. a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, and it, I just really appreciate the way how thorough he was with my old horse. Mm. And I thought it'd be oh, no, it's laminitis or oh, you can't treat him with him in the ground. Yeah. Um, but for 45 minutes on um, Thursday with him, and 45 minutes yesterday, x ray, x ray, x ray, I thought, actually, you actually care about my old horse, um, which meant a lot. Yeah. So, you know, it's always oh, money and, you know, um, the dollar signs go up. Mm. But then again, he's been so good to me, he hasn't been a sick horse. I owe it to him just to give him a little bit of comfort. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's very important that people realize, uh, you know, I think it's so hard when you retire your horse. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Because when they are in work, um, you see them every day. Yeah. And you're on top of them every day. Yeah. So it's so much easier to feel mm -hmm. when something's not quite mm -hmm. right, especially with the stoic horses. I know Danny can be very stoic too. Yeah. You know, it's, it's very hard for me to, to tell someone that my horse isn't right because mm -hmm. they can't see it. it it's a minute yeah. feeling. Yeah, yeah. And I think when you retire them and when they're not ridden anymore, mm -hmm. it's so hard mm -hmm. to know, is this old age? Is yeah. it is it a horse that's it's in winter and he's slightly stiff yeah. or is it actual pain? Yeah. You know, yeah. and I think for a vet to then have gone, okay, well, let's find the cause, yeah. let's figure out what's going on yeah. and, and let's see what yeah. the road forward is, yeah. is really, you know, it's, it's yeah, important. It means a lot to him. Mm. No, it really means a lot to him. He was very really concerned about what I wanted to pay. And when he was taking x-ray after x-ray, I was like, oh, they're going to And he said, look, I know I'm taking a lot of, um, a lot of pictures, mm -hmm. but um, I'm only going to charge you for a, for a full set. Mm -hmm. so I'm thinking, sure. You know, yeah. um, and that means a lot. I mean, it's an old horse, mm -hmm. and he's taking picture after. I mean, he must have taken eight pictures of each foot. And um, I just thought, okay. And he said, I'll just charge you for a, for a set. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then he was studying the x-rays, and he said, you see this, and then and I, and you see this, this, and um, so. Yeah, and I think it's really awesome for a bit as well to not just treat us as owners as mm. incompetent. Yes. You yeah. know, I, I don't expect a vet to explain all the nitty gritty mm. and scientific mm. things for me, but having a conversation with me and saying, look, this is what I see, this is the problem, this is where yeah. it is, do you see that? Yeah. You know, really mm. does help because it gives you a much better understanding yeah. of, of what's going on yeah, yeah. and someone taking an extra, looking at the x-ray and saying, oh, your horse has got laminitis, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. And not explaining the x-ray to you. I don't know why I'm reading the x-ray. Yeah. Um, and so you're saying, but you see this and there and that, because of that, and you see the little bit. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it just meant a lot to me that he went the extra mile for my old horse. Yeah. You know, and I did say to him, you know, I don't want him to suffer. Mm -hmm. He is old, he's not eight. Um, you know, if he was eight, then maybe I would do an operation or mm -hmm. at, at, a, at a 29 year old, I'm not going to put him through that. I don't know if you'll even survive in an asset. Mm. So, um, but then he's got a sort of a, I don't know, it's another growth in the foot. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's about, about that size. Mm -hmm. And they said they can actually do an operation and, and bring it out. They don't put them under, they just tranquilize oh, okay. them. And I said, well, I don't really want to do that to him. Mm. Um, and they said, well, that's fine, we'll put the white bar shoes on. And, mm. and he, I mean, when I walked him away from the ferry today, he was like, okay. He was a really lot happier. Yeah. Um, and then when they when he denerved the front foot on, on Thursday to trot him and then the back foot. Yeah, yeah. It was just so nice seeing him being sound again. Yeah. Or more sound. And the look on his face, like, oh, I can walk, I can feel good. So I thought, and you know, when he's feeling good, he's full of nonsense. He doesn't act like a tree now. So and he's looking alert and he's happy and he's eating and he hasn't lost condition. Mm. You know, if he was looking like an old horse and, and not happy, well, it would be easier to make a decision. But when you get a horse that's looking good and fat and round and, and he's a little bit lame, so... Yeah. No, I and I think, you know, he hasn't given me a hard life. He hasn't cost me a lot of money. Mm. So now, at 29, he's, not a, he's never been on any uh, supplements. Mm. And now, to give him this when he's 29, is not much I think to you, you know, um, also, the fact that he is 29 and he hasn't given you problems, mm. you know, he, he's, he's been a very sound, solid, yeah, yeah. healthy horse. Mm. It, I think it's very hard if you've got a horse that's unsound from a young age yeah. 
you know, trying mm. to, to keep them sound mm. later in life yeah. as it becomes near impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Where if they're like bone and Danny, you know, they're sound and they, yeah. they're healthy and, yeah. and they don't really mechanically, they move fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's so much easier mm. when they get older yeah. to, to do a little something yeah. different. Yeah. I feel like I owe it to him just to help yeah. him a little bit more. And yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to be, you know, unrealistic and say he's going to go on forever. But when he's yeah. been with you for 20 years, it's hard. You know. And he's been, as I say, he's, I think he had my colleague once, many years ago, for about two hours. Yeah. And then he cut himself so he had have stitches. And I think that's like all he's done. He's yeah. never been sick. Mm. Um, and this is now the first thing. I mean, never thought Bob was going to get laminitis, but anyway. Yeah, I mean, he, um, doesn't, he doesn't come across as a laminate, of course. No. You know, if I think about the ponies that I've mm. had to stable manage that mm. got laminitis, they're normally obesely yeah. overweight. Yeah. Um, you know, you can almost see them. Mm. They've got cellulite. Yeah. Um, most of them are ponies. I'm not saying I have, yeah, yeah. you know, horses don't get laminitis. Mm. Um, you know, but but if you look at him, he doesn't mm. he doesn't fit your traditional no. picture of, of no. what laminitis should yeah. look like. Yeah. yeah. You know, and he doesn't have something like got bitten by a snake, so that they have chronic laminitis yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, so yeah. I actually think it's quite interesting, mm. you know. Mm. And the bar shoes, as far as I understand, when the pedal bone drops down a little bit because it's not being supported mm. by the laminite mm. in the hoof, the, the bar shoe just kind of shifts yeah. the weight back yeah. so that the weight is, the, the, the uh, pedal bone isn't pushing through the bottom of the yeah, foot. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, yeah. and it's amazing how something. Yeah. That simple. Yeah, and that's very really makes true. such a difference. Yeah. And Bo has got very, very flat feet. Mm -hmm. So he stands on a stone. He really it's pure feet. So yeah. this is not just lifting his soul mm -hmm. from the ground a bit as well. Um, and as I said to him today, I said it's going to make you feel less pressure. Yeah. And that you'll be able to move easier. Mm -hmm. But he's just such a good patient. He just takes everything in his stride. He's just not a difficult horse. Yeah. And he's just, as I say, he's <laughs> not a dog. He's just a pleasure to work with. Overgrown orange dog. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. 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 He's very orange. Yeah. Um, but yes, I mean, he's, no, his weight is fine. Mm -hmm. and, and an old horse, even before 29, how they say in their hips and mm -hmm. stuff, he's nicely round. You're yeah. not fat, but you're just round. No, uh, but, it, but like you say, he isn't fat. You know, he, mm -hmm. he carries the appropriate amount of weight for a horse of his age. Yeah. You can't have them too thin because then they've got nothing against the elements. Yeah. You know, then yeah. they get really cold. and. If something does go a little bit wrong, they pick up a virus or something, yeah, then, yeah. then it's near impossible to keep them yeah, going. Yeah. Um, I think that that's the biggest thing that I find with older horses mm -hmm. is not necessarily the muscle wasting away, yeah. but the fact that their digestive systems yeah. don't work anymore and yeah. then they just, the condition just disappears. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. he, he, he doesn't, like you say, he doesn't look 29. No, 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 definitely not. I had a horse that made it to 25. Mm -hmm. I had him also, I had him for 21 years. Mm -hmm. I rode him on the Thursday and the Saturday I had to put him down and it, he was making funny noises and my vet came and stuck a tube down and it was turning out that he wasn't digesting his food so he was basically starving himself. Yeah. So I had to put him down mm -hmm. because the vet said either this or you find him dead in a paddock tomorrow. Yeah. And it's, um, not, it's not fair. No, no. no. Mm -hmm. was, we're hoping that Bo hasn't got cushion, cushions as well and I went on the internet to see what a horse looks like with cushions and he hasn't got that. He's got a long coat mm -hmm. but it's not that curly. Yeah, but I mean, also again, he's an older horse. Yeah. He probably was clipped when he was younger. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. um, he is thoroughbred. Yeah. He's a gelding. Yeah. You know, there, there's all these mm. factors that count against him for yeah. having a short little shiny yeah. coat in, yeah. in winter. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and, and and we're very fortunate that mm. our horses can go out most of the day. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. So yeah. it's not like he's stabled, tucked up with a blanket all day, every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. He goes out. Yeah. You know, yeah. so they do need a bit more of a coat. And I tend to agree with you if I'm if I'm thinking of the cushions horses mm. I've seen and worked with, they do tend to have a quite a curly yeah, coat. It's very thick, yeah. And they tend to have a thick coat year round. Yes. You know, they yeah. never yeah. ever blow yeah. it out. Yeah. And I mean I've noticed that Bo starts losing his coat in October. Yeah. Here it goes everywhere. Yeah, you know, it comes out in tufts. Yeah, you know, in handfuls. Mm. Um, and so I mean, every winter he's been like that. Where mm. He's probably one of the first to stop using his coat because he's quite a hot horse. He gets yeah hot, and then the new stables we've actually got him against the door, so then he gets the breeze. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then they just go according to the weather as to light blanketing mm. or mm. thick blanketing or whatever. So 
um, then we're going to move him to the bottom of the stables. And then I said, no, look, leave him there. So he's at least got a big door. Yeah. And he gets the breeze and he can look at the trees and see what's going on outside. So, um, and yes, uh, yesterday when they were x raying him at the bottom, and we had to put Royal in somebody else's pad, in somebody else's bed because they can't be apart. And he didn't like it. This is not my bed. And what am I doing in this bed? And then when they finished, I took them up to their bed. Mm. But there was somebody in Royal's bed. Ah. And he was like, well, what are you doing in my bed? <laughs> <laughs> and he really, I think they're very happy with where they are. Yeah, my <laughs> Wish you were well. Yeah. Yeah, so. Karen, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I really appreciate you kind of giving your insights and you know, telling me stuff that I didn't know about photography yeah. and, and you know, you kind of, I think, personally, because I'm not in the industry, I have half an idea of what I think might be happening, yeah. you know, um, and thank you so much for like sharing your insights and like, your experience and, you know, kind of yeah, so where okay. you're at and where yeah. you're going. Um, yeah, it was okay, great. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. So welcome. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed the interview and got some knowledge and tips and ideas and things. And um, yeah, please remember that um, if you think that there's someone who could use the information in this video to press the share button and, and share big and wide. Thanks so much. Bye. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and buzz the bell. And although, take no again, talk for it.